How to make and animate curtains in Blender. This should be easy and fun, so let's see this through. To do curtains, we need a simple plane at first, so shift A to add one. You might also rotate it on X or Y to make it vertical. To work on this, we need more subdivisions. So in edit mode, right, click, and subdivide. The number of cuts is up to you. Something around 40 or 50 is fine for now, because we will add more later with modifiers. Let's move the plane above the grid. Then we will go to the physics and choose cloth for the plane. If we hit the space bar to play animation, the plane will fall, just like if you grab a piece of cloth and drop it mid-air. So we need anchor points, which you can add in the shape tab under the pin group. To get this pin group, we can in edit mode, select any number of points, like the entire top edge. Or you can go and pick a pattern from it, maybe one by two, select one point and skip two. And you only need to do that once. Then spam the control shift plus to repeat. We can add those points to a vertex group from here. So hit the plus icon then assign the points to the new group. After that, go back to the cloth's shape tab and fill the pin group there. Now if we play the animation, the cloth won't fall. The shrink factor is the key here for curtains. You can drop it at minus one, then play the animation again, and you will have an easy and simple curtain shape. Right-click to shade, smooth the curtains. A subdivision surface modifier is also needed, so add it at level 1 or 2. You can affect this with any kind of force in Blender, mainly wind force is used with curtains, so we can add it behind to blow some breeze. Wind setting is easy. Increase the strength to around 1500, put the flow and noise at 5 to make randomness in the force. This will make it look more natural with a bit of exaggeration just to demonstrate how it works. You might need to tune it down for interior shots unless you're missing the entire wall. There are many ways to animate this curtain. We can add another shape, a cube maybe, and try to make it show as a wire. Scale it around the plane to fit its width and apply scale once you're done. Once you're done with that, you can add to the plane a copy scale constraint. Pick the cube as a target and keep only the axis we need to affect, in my case, the X. Then play the animation and rescale the cube while it's running. Another way to animate curtains is with open close animation. So let's delete everything beside the plane and go back to the cloth settings. The cloth does have default presets, so you can pick between cotton, leather, silk, and more. The silk one is cool for curtains, but not much to animation. I will make the shrink factor on zero like before. Then under the vertex group we made, there's an area for shape key animation. Here we can select the plane and hit shape keys plus icon to add two things, a basis and a key one. The shape key is for edit mode animation. So I can make the timeline on 20, then go to the key one value, hit I to add a key frame, then slide the timeline forward for another 20 or 30 frames, go into edit mode, and try to move those pinpoints to one corner, and we can do that with the scale. But first, you need to pick one of the corners, hit shift S and choose cursor to select it. Highlight the pin group again, change the transformation to cursor to make it the center, and scale all the selected points to the corner you want. Once you're done, get out of edit mode, put the shape keys value on one, and hit I again for another keyframe. This way, if we play animation, it will make the curtains open and close. If we add another two keyframes to the value, to go from zero to one, then one to zero, we can make it open, stay a couple of seconds, then close it again.
there's still some errors happening, and that's cause I picked the silk. It is super smooth, so we might go with something thicker, like cotton or rubber, which is the best in animation. But you can try them out one by one to see what fits you. At the end, you might need to bake this in order to save the simulation and make it run smoother in the viewport. This will make it fixed. Changing the numbers won't affect the simulation after the bake, so you will need to delete the bake if you want to edit the cloth settings, then bake it again if needed. And that's it. You can drop another force on it or shade it with fun colors. The kit library I have here is a must if you're a beginner and it's free, so have fun. Like and subscribe if you're still kicking, and until next time, stay sharp. Goodbye.